If you're looking for an extremely light laptop that does not compromise on durability, performance, or functionality, the ZenBook A14 needs to be at the top of your list. This thing is battle tested. The material is tested by placing the laptop along with keys and coins inside a rotating drum. Shock resistance is tested by dropping the laptop from a 50 centimeter height. Wear resistance is evaluated by rubbing the material 18,000 times in the same place to check the color doesn't fade. This robust testing ensures that the ZenBook A14 remains scratch-free, resilient to shocks, and maintains its pristine look. I even did my own durability test, and I was shocked by the durability. Even the fact that I tested this, I was really nervous, and the durability was fantastic. I wouldn't dream of doing this on some other laptops. Now, Asus did not stop by merely providing a durable and light device. My tests indicate over 21 hours of real-world battery life exceptional multitask performance, and I've seen performance remain stable whether plugged into the charger or on battery power. Now let's talk about the spec of this machine and the other options you have available. The ZenBook A14 is available with the Snapdragon X Elite and Snapdragon X or X Plus processors from eight cores all the way up to 12 core CPU. The models are the UX3407QA, the model I'm reviewing, and the UX 3407RA, the more powerful X Elite model. Now, what I have in front of me is the Qualcomm Snapdragon X126100. It's eight cores and eight threads. It's the It comes with Qualcomm's Adreno X145. It has 32 gigs of RAM, 85, 33 megahertz, LDDR, 5X clock speeds, one terabyte of SSD, and that ships with PCIe 4.0 M.2, and it has Wi-Fi 7. The ZenBook A14 achieves an ultra light design at just 970 grams without compromising on strength or performance. Now the Sera aluminum is 30% lighter and three times stronger than the ordinary aluminum material. It's available in two colors, this Iceland gray as well as Zabriskie beige. Now the Sera aluminum material is very interesting. Normally when you touch an aluminum material in a cool room, you feel that, you know, cool aluminum feel. This feels much more to the touch, like maybe a carbon fiber material. It is very light. It's very dense and durable. It's, it's so unique. That's, that's really all I can say about it. Uh, now, as we go ahead and look at the bottom cover, they've of course done a fantastic job securing the bottom panel into the side panel. So everything is mounted and put together very nice. But just look how thin and light that is. Absolutely crazy. Huge shout out to Asus for partnering with me on this video and sending over the ZenBook A14 so we can talk through this device and I can help you figure out if this is the right device for your needs. The ZenBook A14, though it is a very light and thin laptop, comes with a great amount of ports. HDMI, two USB type C's, and these are both 40 gigabytes per second transfer speeds, headphone jack, and then on the other side, we have our USB type A port. So no dongles really necessary for this laptop. You have everything you need for an on the go productivity and uh, creator laptop. Now, as we open and close the lid for the first time, it is like lifting clouds. It's, it's so crazy. Now this is made possible by Asus Easy Lift. It is their hinge design that allows the lid to open and close very easily while remaining wobble free. So you open it, sets itself very nicely. And this is all done with an internal mechanism. It's like a spring that wraps around where the screen is attaching to the keyboard deck on that pin. It is so smooth, it's crazy. And it stays in place, very nice. Now, as we slide the laptop around, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the laptop. Now, the trackpad that it comes with has these multi-gestures. So you can go ahead and turn the volume up and down. You can go ahead and change songs, change the brightness all from the trackpad. I love the full size edge to edge trackpad. Very quiet, yet it does take a nice firm click to activate. So you are going to know when you get that trackpad click. Now, another thing to point out is the keyboard. Really well spaced. I like the arrow keys placed down here along the bottom. Full size shift keys on both sides. One thing that stands out to me though is they have put a matte finish on the keys that is like anti smudge anti-oil. And so your keyboard's not going to look oily and dirty with this keyboard. And a lot of other brands, they get so messy so quickly. I have a laptop that I use uh, quite often, and that's one of my complaints. 
And cleaning a laptop keyboard, it's just something that I really don't enjoy doing much because it just feels kind of concerning. Like I'm like gonna put some wet stuff on it and rub it on it and then it maybe some of that liquid drips down. Is that gonna ruin it? It just, it irks me. So I don't, I like a clean keyboard, but I don't really like to clean my keyboard. And these keys are going to keep the keyboard looking clean and oil resistant. Since January, laptop reviews have been slow. George. So I've had some time to dig into Microsoft Copilot Plus, and I wish I had done it sooner. I've been able to save a few hours a week by using Recall, Paint, I know, right? Kind of shocking. And a few prompts using Copilot Plus as an assistant. Now let's talk about Recall. I'm constantly jumping between projects, especially right now, while I'm working on building my own like AI agents to do a lot of the admin work around here. I've built a few agents, but recently I broke my code on one of the agents and did not save the original working code. But since I had Microsoft Recall turned on, I was able to find my original code inside of Copilot, saving me from having to reprompt slash rewrite all that original code to make it work again. Generative fill and removing background. Now when I'm editing images, especially for my thumbnails, I rely on generative fill to clean up any unwanted details there are a lot of scenarios where I want to separate myself from the background to provide more contrast and really make the image pop. That's where I've been using paint. I know of all the tools I've been using paint. Now I've been using it to quickly remove my background. I know this feature is available in Photoshop and Affinity Photo, but I found that for my straightforward use case, it is so much faster to just use paint and it does a really good job. Analyzing Excel data. Now this hands down has been my favorite use case so far. I struggle to come up with ideas that you, the community, really will enjoy. So I've been using Copilot Plus to analyze my past best performing content based on several metrics. I can export my data straight from my YouTube studio and then Copilot Plus can point out any trends that I might have missed when analyzing my data to provide video ideas and even get me rolling on a rough script. This has really helped me see what you all have been enjoying most from my content so I can plan future videos more effectively. It has really helped me get through all that initial verbal and mental clutter to get to a great piece of content to put out for y'all. Now, I will admit that the results are not prompt to play. Uh, for instance, I kept asking it to write a 2000 to 2500 word script and it kept spitting back a 1300 word or less script for me. So I have found that it's best to ask it to build out an outline and then I can go ahead and expound on the initial idea and then ask it to help me tweak any of my thoughts when they're not making sense and it's not clear and usable for my script which then ultimately creates an absolutely awesome video script to deliver a great piece of content for you guys. Now you might be asking, okay, Ben, why use Microsoft Copilot Plus? There are tons of other tools online that offer AI assistance, but I can really foresee the power of Microsoft Copilot Plus lying in its integrated nature. As you build out your prompts and your AI agents, they're baked into your everyday flow. So you don't have to connect a bunch of pieces together it can all take place within one click of your Microsoft Copilot Plus button. Now, have you been testing out Copilot Plus? I'd love to know what you've been working on to automate your workflow so you can be doing more creative work more often. This laptop has no to very low fan noise, about 25 decibels for productivity, video playback, web browsing, and most tasks for artists, designers, and photographers. So think about an ambient room is around 23 to 30 decibels. So, so you will not hear this laptop. However, under heavy loads, like a 4K export on full performance mode, I saw about 55 decibels of fan noise. And the thermals on the laptop were about 70 to 78 degrees Celsius. Now on balanced mode for that same 4K export, I saw about 47 to 50 decibels of fan noise with the thermals at about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. For the 4K export on whisper mode, 37 to 42 decibels of fan noise with 71 degrees Celsius on the CPU. So if you're pushing this laptop really hard, you will get some fan noise, but for your everyday use, this thing is gonna be unheard. The ZenBook A14 comes with a 70 watt hour battery and a 65 watt charger block that connects via USB-C. And this laptop accomplishes stellar battery life. For Passmark productivity, doing you know, your everyday office and just life work, if you're maybe a student or a business owner, 21 hours and seven minutes. Streaming video playback online, 26 hours and 11 minutes. Offline video playback, the battery life Asus claims to be about 32 hours. 
I did not personally test that one. Photoshop battery life, eight hours and 13 minutes. And then Premiere Pro playback, I put a project into Premiere Pro, play it back at fourth quality, it was 4K, and it ran playback on loop for about that six hours. Pretty solid battery life, I would say. Now this screen is a full HD OLED display at 1920 by 1200 resolution, providing deep blacks, bright, vivid, and accurate colors. The screen brightness is 398 nits. The color gamut range is 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3, all at a delta E of 0.79. Now, for anybody new to color gamut range, the range is the amount of colors that it, the screen can reproduce. The delta E is the accuracy at which those colors are reproduced. The lower the number, the more accurate. Anything less than two is really good. Anything less than one is fantastic. And this with the 0 0.79 is amazing. And what I like about this model is they chose not to do a super high resolution panel, but make it color accurate. And the reason I like that is because they were able to make this laptop more affordable than it would have been by putting that high resolution panel on the A14. And so you're able to get kind of the best of both worlds, really good color accuracy, good performance, good build quality, but at a reasonable price point. This laptop is not cheap by any of the stretch of the imagination. The starting price is, I think, around $899 in the US, um, but for what you get, it is a great price point. Now the TUV low blue light certification, pixel shift and pixel refresh are a part of Asus OLED Care burn-in prevention. But Asus does provide a free OLED screen exchange program for any burn-in issues that might occur while under warranty. So that can provide you a little extra peace of mind if OLED burn-in is a concern to you. Asus has also provided a way for you to customize your viewing experience based on your use case. The color gamut range of sRGB is great for creating web content or browsing. DCI-P3 is for cinema content and display Display P3 is for more movie grade colors, finesse to fit everyday viewing in the real world. So Asus has that feature built in, so you can go ahead and access that and use that to change up your colors a little bit to make sure you get the most accurate possible for your specific use case. Now the speakers for the laptop are along the bottom cover, and here's a quick sample so you can hear what they sound like for yourself. And of course, there is a webcam on the top bezel. Here is a sample of the webcam, so you can sample that for yourself. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook A14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And then of course, the keyboard. I'm gonna give you an audio sample of both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what they sound like for yourself. Now, the one thing I'm gonna point out, if I'm gonna say like, man, I wish they would have made this a little bit better. Maybe uh, having a borderless display where you have you know, the glossy all the way up to the edge, um, that would have been really cool. Uh, it would have made this just that extra level of premium look. However, it is a good material they've used. It's actually kind of more of like a soft touch material that very much re is reminiscent of the Sierra Aluminum. Um, but that would have been a nice touch to just take it to that next level of like premium experience. Now this is a glossy display. Um, so do note that so you can see there's a bit of reflectiveness. So if you're somebody who likes a matte display, this is not going to be the case. Maybe get a matte screen protector, whatever it might be. But this is a glossy display. Most, if not all displays that are OLED are going to be glossy, uh, especially from Asus. They, uh, they do mainly the glossy OLED display. Okay, taking out the bottom cover of the A14. It just shows how paper thin this material is. Uh, it is insane. I mean, this one piece, it's not much heavier than a few sheets of paper. And I'm, I'm, I am not even kidding about that. That's insane. Now you can see the vents here, two vents uh, that are gonna be coming out with the two fans. So you got plenty of airflow to keep this system nice and cool. The greatest thing about this laptop, super light, solid thinness, but look at that a full-size M.2. That is a NVMe PCIe 4.0 that is upgradable, but that's a great drive to start with. It can be super snappy and quick. Now you have your battery, which again is upgradable as well or replaceable. A lot of times the batteries are something that, you know, after years of use is one of the things that does need to be changed out and that you have quick, easy access to that 
is fantastic. As you can see, no upgrade path on the RAM that is soldered to the motherboard, but if you get the 32 gigs of RAM, I, I, I promise that is gonna be enough RAM for you. You're going to have no issues with multitasking and any limitations inside of maybe Photoshop or Premiere Pro will be mitigated by that 32 gigs of RAM. Regarding the performance of this laptop, whether you're on charger or you're on battery power, we're seeing nearly the same performance. For Geekbench single core and multi-core, as well as Cinebench 2024, I have those results on the screen where you can see that scores are almost matching up exactly, which is really awesome. Now, compared to other laptops, this model I have specifically is the entry-level CPU setup. Now, it does have 32 gigs of RAM, which is fantastic for multitasking you're going to have no issues running, say, you know, Spotify, web browser, a creator app like Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator. You're gonna to have tons of ceiling for video editing. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. Now, looking at this compared to other laptops, it's definitely more of like the middle of the road in regards to my benchmark charts. If you want more performance, I would recommend getting the X Plus or the X Elite, and that will push you up the chart of more single core performance of more single core and a bit more multi-core performance. So you have options here, right? But if you don't, but if you're somebody who's not going to be doing a ton of creator work, I think this entry level Snapdragon X is is perfect. It, you don't need any more if you're doing productivity, web browsing. You know, if you're a student or business owner, this is great. But definitely get that 32 gigs of RAM because we are all doing way more multitasking than we ever have in the past. Now, going ahead and looking at Photoshop. We have a 5,032 inside of Photoshop. Now, the thing I want to drive home here is remember, this is still running through an emulation. This is an ARM-based chip. This is Snapdragon. Right now, the Adobe application is still x86. So once we get a native application from Adobe, that score is going to increase even more. So right now that we're... So right now that we're competitive against a lot of the other laptops coming out on the market and we, we don't even have a native application, it has to run through an emulation, has to translate the information and then the ARM chip can read the application. That takes quite a dip on the performance capabilities. So this thing, once we get that native app, is gonna be even more powerful. Next, let's look at video editing. Really solid playback results. Full quality playback on 1080p, zero drop frames. For 4K, we had fourth quality, zero drop frames half quality zero drop frames for the playback, and then full quality 4K was 2,764 drop frames. I personally only ever use fourth or eighth quality when I'm scrubbing through my footage, when I'm editing my, my videos. That's really not a huge concern for me because I'm gonna edit on fourth or half quality anyway. Now the export time was not amazing. And so I would not consider this today to be the absolute best video editing laptop. But if you're editing 1080p, it has a good export time, a nine minute project exported in seven minutes and 56 seconds. Nine minute 4K project, 26 minutes and 47 seconds. But again, right now, this computer is being held back by Adobe not having that native application launched at the moment. But they, they keep saying it's coming out soon, time will tell. If you're looking for a light laptop that does not compromise on durability and performance, there's not a lot that comes close to the A14, especially at this price point. Most laptops with this sort of offering are gonna be hundreds of dollars more. So definitely consider the A14 as one of your picks if you're considering a laptop moving into 2025. Links are in the description below if you do wanna make a purchase. I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you through your buying decision, and I'll see you in the next one.